just to jump right into it, um, I can start by stating the obvious that we are right now in some unprecedented times of uncertainty. Um, everything from what's going to be happening next politically, medically, educationally, I think the whole world can feel a little bit up in the air right now. And making decisions on how to navigate in that can be challenging when the one thing that is certain, of course, is uncertainty. Um, so the best path can be different for everyone. Obviously, we've got factors of family, work, personal needs. And when navigating decisions in times of uncertainty, it can be really helpful to take a moment, step back and pause briefly, just to think about where we're going and how we'll get there and what are the guideposts that really matter the most to us. So I wanna thank all of you for choosing to do that here. Um, just during this time today, that's exactly what we're going to be doing in just a, a conscious manner. Um, now, before we start, I just wanna say that decision-making around anything related to COVID, which today is basically everything, is definitely going to be a really individualized situation. So for some people, um, if, you know, you're, if they were a parent and this were their daughter, they would look at this picture and they would say, hey, you know, it may not be perfect, but she's learning to be with other people. She has a great teacher who's helping her to adjust and she's coming home happy and it's working for our family. Whereas other people might say, oh, this isn't working. She needs FaceTime. Or, this particular child may have some breathing issues or it's just one more thing for her to have to manage now. And for our family, a pandemic pod or just another year at home is the best thing for us. Um, you know, some children are audio learners, some are visual, some are more tactile. There's personality factors as well. So the blessing and the curse here is that there really is no single correct answer, especially for kids and families when we're factoring in the needs for multiple people. Now, similarly, um, when we think about returning to the office, some of us might look at this picture and say, hey, totally fine if I'm in that picture. I'm just so glad to be back at the office, having live conversations, being in the same room as people strap on a mask, no biggie. Whereas other people might say, you know, I don't have good conversations in a mask or my voice doesn't carry so well or I can't breathe or I just need to see people's faces or whatever situation that they may have. Some of us may have health concerns, whether for ourselves or for our family members in home. Uh, so please understand that my goal here today is not to suggest any decision on any particular issue. Uh, it's really just to address the topic of decision making in times of uncertainty to help you explore what factors matter most to you and to offer some techniques and perspectives that may be helpful. So as always, please feel free to take what works for you and you know, discard the rest. These are just ideas. And again, it's great that you're just sitting down and giving yourself the gift today of just thinking about what the issues are. So it can be helpful to take that moment and name and discuss specifically some of the issues that we're dealing with as we make decisions during times of uncertainty. And I use a chessboard as an example here because I know sometimes in decision making, in times of uncertainty, life can feel like a chessboard. So, for example, you know, parents, for example, who are trying to think about remote versus in person versus hybrid, um, our children's education, and you know, every future is at stake. So, the stakes can feel super high. Um, and so in these types of situations, it really can be helpful to just specifically take a moment to name and discuss some of the issues that we're dealing with as we make decisions during times of uncertainty. When we've taken that moment to inventory and organize and put labels on things, we feel calmer and we function more efficiently. So whether it's a kitchen cupboard or our mental cupboards, and no, this is not a picture of my actual kitchen cupboards. They're actually not that well organized. 
the idea is just that taking a moment to label the factors can increase our awareness and it can help us to stay closer to others, have better relationships since we have a vocabulary to share our process because we've taken that moment to reflect and to think. And that also helps us to get feedback and support from others when we really have the words at the tip of our tongue to pinpoint the feelings and the issues that matter the most to us. Um, one more reason to just take a moment on inventorying the factors and concerns here is that in terms of self-esteem, it's actually a behavior of self-esteem and it's also a preparatory behavior. So anxiety's healthy function is to stimulate preparatory behaviors. And so if you do have anxiety around making decisions in times of uncertainty, it's actually a really healthy preparatory behavior to take action on that by taking an inventory of, of what the factors are. So as I'm going to share in a moment, um, some popular factors that I'm hearing a lot about right now in my practice. You might also think of some additional factors or concerns in your particular situation, and it's good to put those things into words as well. I would encourage you to jot them down, um, you know, just on a sheet of paper next to you. Just also to preview for you, we are going to be doing some exercises later where you will practice making a decision. Um, so as I read the factors, um, if anything makes you think of any particular decision, um, keep that in your mental back pocket. So some of the factors that might be on your mind right now um, are things like risk tolerance. So some people, of course, they kind of, they're open, they don't really worry too much about risk. Some people are gonna be more risk averse. There's no one right way to be. The idea is just to understand yourself and the people in your family and to be able to talk about risk tolerance and what it means to you. Other important factors right now on the table for a lot of people are learning and communication styles of ourselves, of our team members, and even of our children. So again, some people might be audiovisual learners, some people might be more spoken versus written communicators, um, even things like the need for affiliation in psychology, which is a psychology term about just feeling uh, part of a group and how important that is to different people. Um, and, and whether they feel that way through remote or through in-person experiences. Um, also being conscious of the factor of wearing masks. So, you know, reading faces versus hearing the words alone is going to affect different people differently. Um, so again, I'm not here to tell anybody what they should do. I'm here to help give you some vocabulary and stimulate you to take a moment and think and reflect um, about what the factors are for you. Um, other factors that have mattered to people are things like the age of the child that, uh, for parents. That could be an important factor for parents when they're thinking about the developmental stage of their child and that child's ability to focus and pay attention. Um, medical issues of the self, um, of yourself or of your extended family, as well as financial needs to create security, which is really important too. Um, so picking up again with the idea about the financial security, I just wanted to say that for some parents as they think about that piece on their chessboard, they sometimes almost need permission to acknowledge to the children that that's actually part of the picture as well. And I just want to encourage parents to, feel, to know that that's okay to talk about. Um, it can in fact be really refreshing for, for parents to realize that it's actually helpful for kids to appreciate and understand the value of work and money and, and the role of those things in the family. So hopefully now I've kind of primed the pump with some popular factors that are on a lot of people's minds lately with regards to decision-making and uncertainty. So Megan, if there's anything that you wanna share that people are coming up, but otherwise, if people wanna just take a moment to kind of list and label some of the factors that are most important in your life so that you have a vocabulary around that. Um, other things too that we wanna inventory are our emotions. So it can be really helpful to be able to know and describe your feelings. And 
as a psychologist who works with high functioning people, um, I, I've noticed that high functioning people often think it's sometimes best to just override your emotions.